Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Now let's go to the Rolling Flint Hills, home of the Cats and Dogs Studio. Here's your host, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the Power Cat Podcast. Tim Fitzgerald, Zach Carlson here in the Cats and Dogs Studio, and Ryan Gilbert in his even more luxurious Aggieville Suite apartment, where he now has a microphone of his very own. He's no longer talking through his uh, whatever headset thingy, Apple headphones things that stunk. I hope I sound good, better. You sound better. I don't know if good. I'll never be good. I think you sound like uh, the amount of money I spent on the mic. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, but we'll we'll get through this. This will be an adjustment period, folks. uh, Send your complaints uh, to Fridge Wholesale Liquor. By going in there and saying, I would like to buy stuff. And they'll understand that's code for I've got a complaint to file about the PowerCat podcast. I'd like to buy stuff. And make sure you take money so you can actually do it. Because you don't want to be a liar. That's that's how that's our complaint department. Right there at the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Oh, by the way, they sponsor this podcast at the corner of this and that in the town in which we live. Guys, I'm going through a, a stage of my treatments here where I am sleepy all the time. So, Gills, you got to be entertaining or I will fall asleep. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> uh, Zach's always entertaining. Like Zach's getting emotional right there. Yep. His emotion. Yep. Uh, I don't know. How are our questions? We're not talking about the topic, which I appreciate because I want to be done with it. Uh, there's some NIL. There's some Avery Johnson. There's some Big 12 basketball. There's some look aheads to next year. A hodgepodge of we got a hodgepodge K State sports questions. We're just going to call this a Brett Regan podcast, the Hodgepodge. <laughs> I still don't forgive him for coming up with that. I kind of yeah. want it to be the Hodgepodge round. No, no. Yeah. But I believe in my fellas, my peoples, and we went with it. And we're going to go with this. We're not messing around. I've already mentioned the fridge. I already made fun of Ryan Gilbert. The dogs are both in here. Dudes in his bed. Daphne's behind me. Let's pop it up. Let's get. Let's get in there. We gonna there. We gonna start. Wow. Oh, yeah. They they live a very rough life. Yeah, and that is a that's a dragon in front of her that has had its wings removed because dude is a killer, an absolute killer. Okay, we'll go back to this now. Ready? Ready? You ready? ready? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Questions from All Bass Station. Here we go. From I Like Pickles Cat, what are reasonable expectations for Avery Johnson in 2024? Uh, Heisman Trophy. Two two Heisman Trophies. I think it's reasonable. I don't think that's outlandish. Yeah, it's a good question. And I hate trying to put these into stats because I don't know exactly what the offense is going to look like. But I, I think it's probably a team stat as much. I mean, I think reasonable is eight wins. I mean... I think that's true for any program. I mean, maybe not Ohio State or Alabama, but uh, the rest of us peons, you know, you get to eight wins. That's that's reasonable. Ten wins is possible. I think ten wins is reasonable. I don't think it. I think it's on the out. I, I mean, I'm perpetually an eight win a year guy and yes, be happy are. with it. Yes, but recognizing the talents of Avery Johnson and some of the people that will surround him, I think that if you want to expect 10 wins i think you are a reasonable person for doing so i may not say that they're going to win 10 wins or win 10 games in 2024 as we get further into future podcast of trying to you know figure out what the 2024 season is going to look like from a wins and losses standpoint but i think that you know 10 wins puts you in that big 12 championship range and I think that K-State certainly, you know, being at least expecting to get to Arlington is not unreasonable by any means. So I think Avery Johnson can take K-State there. We had that conversation a few weeks back about Tyler Perry and his statistics and everything that he did. But when this team doesn't go to the NCAA tournament, um, it's hard to view somebody as a, as a K-State legend, so to speak. And so I think the same thing can be said with Avery Johnson. It's, you know, Fitz, you mentioned it, okay? I don't care what Avery Johnson does. K-State fans are probably not going to care what Avery Johnson does statistically if he's not winning games. So you want to get to that eight-win mark, nine-win mark, 
whatever that is, whatever you're satisfied with, you know, that's the reasonable expectation that I think you should put on Avery Johnson. If he's going to be the leader of that team, I guess you should expect him and want him to stay healthy. You know, if he plays in every game for K-State this season and he doesn't stink it up as long as he plays and is, you know, there for pretty much every snap, should be a successful season for Johnson, right? Yeah. yeah I think 6,000 yards passing, 3,000 yards rushing. In one game, right? Yeah, well, that's the season. That Don't get outlandish with this. 36 touchdowns. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. National championship, two Heismans. Two Heismans. Two, two Heismans. And he learns how to fly without without an airplane. That's, that's reasonable. Yeah, you got to be careful here. I mean, at the end of the day, we have to remember he's going to be in his first year of starting at quarterback. And as athletic and talented as he is, so are the defensive coordinators and the defensive players. And they're going to throw all kinds of stuff at him. And we'll see how fast he can learn on the fly. But he's very promising. We got to see him again. Zach and I got to yeah. see him for about an hour. And whew, he, just, he just throws the ball everywhere on the money. And my last point here before we move on, I just I feel like if you say, you know, I expect Avery Johnson to win eight win or to win eight games this season. I think there's going to be a lot of people if they only win eight games that are going to be disappointed. Right. The season could have been more. Right. So that's why I go with that loftier option of 10 wins okay. right. i buy that next question is from buyers dvm there have been recent reports that the upcoming second portal window for football will be crazy multiple schools are getting ready to make moves on other schools players to fill needs do you see k-state as a school that will be poached will they weather the storm will they poach players for their own roster or a little bit of all three now, I know that the answer here is Avery Johnson, but I am I feel really secure in his situation. But who would you poach off of this Kansas State roster? In all seriousness, uh, the tight end left, a lot of the veteran offensive linemen left. They haven't had a – they didn't have a dynamic defensive end that's proven anything. Uh, I guess what I'm saying here is outside of Johnson, the fact that K-State's going to be a young roster I think helps them in this situation. There's not a lot of film – uh, are you going to poach off of, you know, maybe he's going to be good? No, you're going to go find a guy that's proven it on the field. Um, this is a horrible situation. I, I hate this. This is disgusting. That, I mean, there's been recruiting going on ever since the judge handed down the judgment that kind of made it difficult for the NCAA to em enforce any guidelines with, with recruitment, which is BS. Um, then, look, it's going to just be nuts. And, I, I feel for the programs that are going to get raked over the coals, but it's going to happen. If you've got a, a really promising roster and you're not producing, you better hang on. If you got guys that have produced but not wins, you better hang on. Do they go after DJ Giddens or guys like that? Yeah, you DJ know? Giddens I mean, might be someone they'd come after. That's a good point. That kind of falls into that. I, I don't know. Um I just can't imagine openly calling up someone else's player and telling them to leave. I mean, there's just no honor left in this. It's just all cutthroat and it's just disgusting. And I'm not surprised Nick Saban retired. He saw this one coming yeah. and he wanted nothing to do with it because he knew as Alabama, he was going to have to be the one to do the poaching if he wanted to keep up with his competitors at the top of college football. And I think he said, you know what? I don't want to do that. And I appreciate that. Bill Snyder would have done the same thing. I mean, I, I feel like it comes down to, at a certain point, the coaches and teams need to come to an agreement of, hey, we can't just keep doing it. I mean, it's what the rules and regulations are for. It's what the NCAA is for. Right. And, I mean, the NCAA, as much criticism as they get, they need to be there to enforce these types of things. I mean, the NFL has rules. The NBA has rules. All of these leagues have rules for free agency. You know, the calendar year is set. I mean, college sports has just become. I don't even know what the words well, to describe it. It's the, just the there's it's lawless. It is yeah, lawless. It really is now. And the NCAA, they half the time they act in bad faith and they don't do the right thing. And it makes nobody want to believe in them. Right. When the time comes to make these rules and set them and say, hey, we're, we all agree to not do this. You know, they did it with the uh, as stupid as it is, the the pictures and video on unofficial visits. Yeah, that 
frees up a video person's time, makes their job a little bit easier, but it has nothing to do with the rest of the football team. Sure, it saves some time, but you know, there's there's better ways and better rules to make. I mean, free up December. I mean, I don't understand how December hasn't been addressed. addressed. Everybody agrees that it sucks. Well, why haven't you gone gotten together to agree officially we're not doing this? I just at some point maybe college football does need to split off from the NCAA. So maybe everybody can sit down and make rules that they will all agree to abide by. Now, the missing ingredient in the comparison to the professional leagues is the players have a representation in the process. And that is basically what's what's here. And I think the courts have made it very clear. The only way this gets solved is uh, if the players become employees and unionize. They have to be a union so they can have collective bargaining. I don't... I'm. If you want to think that's best for the sport, okay, make them employees. Do they have to go to school? If they don't, then why are we talking about it? It's no longer college sports. I mean, it seems like if you're going to be college sports, being college students is kind of essential. But we, we don't yeah. even talk about that anymore. Gills? I agree, uh, I man. Just, I agree. It's, it's coming, Zach. Yep. I actually heard it with my headphones on. What's coming? Uh, Daphne's. Oh God! Oh, no. See, this is why. This is the real reason I don't come over anymore. Yeah, it really I'm gonna, is. I'm gonna start podcasting from your house. <laughs> come on over. Zach's oh, just boy. gonna be in <laughs> just a hot here. box with the dogs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, next questions from Hemon Rockabelly Dancer. What? I yes. love it. Okay. We've said it before. It's just Rockabelly it's a long. Dancer? Yeah, Hemon. I don't know what that means. There's an emo obviously in it, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. Email caps, rockabilly dancer. Uh, without an NIL cap, how soon does college football die? Uh, well, again, um, I, you can't make a cap. No, it, it's NIL. It's not salary. Yeah. Just because you have all these collectives operating as the bank account, I guess. I don't know. I don't understand NIL in the sense that you can donate to a collective and then the collective, like Dare is right now there, you know, every gallon you buy of gas, three cents goes to NIL. Like, well, if it's going to wildcat NIL, you know, how are they deciding to divvy it up? They're like, Oh, here's some money from Dara's Avery. Go make a social media post. Like, it's just, it's the way that we've gotten around paying players is just outlandish it's, it's so many steps to do what everybody knows is going to happen eventually again i don't think it's sustainable what we're going through right i mean i don't i don't even know what the nil collectives budgets are in the sec but i'm guessing at least five million a year if not ten all from donations mostly from donations some are legitimate we want you to represent our company. Um, that's not sustainable. Those people aren't going to be able to give that money every year. This is a fun new toy. And eventually they're going to say, I'm not getting enough on my return. I'm out. There's just no way. It's it's not sustainable. It's going to have to come into the budgets and uh, you know go right to the salaries. The budgets are going to just have to include the salaries, which will cost us other sports. It's just awful it, everything's awful right now with how the nil has been applied and i'm a guy who thinks everyone should be able to use their name image likeness for their own gain um and i'm all for it but what we're doing now has nothing to do with nil it's just flat out buying players i mean until nil is operated by a complete third party like take like Open Doors for example. I thought that when Open Doors was created, I thought it was because that's the marketplace you kind of go through to get, um, you know, if you want to contact an athlete to get a brand deal done or whatever, you can go to an Open Doors page and there's the athlete profile. There needs to be essentially a third party for these types of deals. You can't just get paid by a collective that's related to your school. You need to have a third party that has nothing to do with the school. In my opinion, I think that you need 
somebody else that operates that that makes nil actual nil you have to go to the person and say hey this is the value proposition we will pay you this you do this and that's the agreement you can't just have hey we got a hundred thousand dollars from company a and company b and we're going to give it to player x i just you know i i think that the way of doing that like you've said it's just it's unsustainable and eventually i think NIL in its original sense, I think it'll sort itself out. The athletes that are, you know, have a legitimate value, their their name, image, and likeness has a value. I think that, you know, that'll eventually be settled. But, you know, it, it, as long as it's this giant pool that is partially school controlled, you know, you're going to have this problem. Do you realize that people donate to the NIL? And you basically get a budget. This is what was given on behalf of football. And when you've spent that money, you're done. You're not going to get any substantial players out of the portal. Everyone's like, you got to get into the portal. Go get those players. You got some open scholarships this spring. Well, what if they don't have money in their NIL fund? It's, it's so complex now. I don't blame coaches for getting sick of this crap. It's horrible what's going on. And the other thing is, you know, soliciting donations to the collective. Like if you or I, let's say we put in a hundred dollars mm-hmm. each, what value are we returning from that outside of just giving somebody a hundred dollars to spend to give to a player? That's gonna yeah. you know, what value do I get from the hundred dollars essentially is what I'm saying. I agree. That is I think the disconnect between what NIL was meant to be and what it has become because it's literally just paying players with extra steps. Somebody else gives the McDonald's bag to the player instead of us. I would like um, someone to just hand me a bag of cash. Which fast food restaurant would you want it to be? Uh, Burger King. Because that's how my game, my game is very mid. Like Burger King. You can have it your way like Burger King. Yeah. 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 Oh, your nose is cold. Wow. <laughs> it scared me. Poodle. Yeah. Dude, I, I don't know what else to say about this. This is gross. Yeah. Last question of the first half from Powercat Ryan. If Wildcat NIL decided to financially back only one women's sport, which sport would be the best investment? Well, I mean, obviously women's basketball has the most interest from fans. Yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm big volleyball fan so i wouldn't mind that but it seems like women's basketball would be the one women's basketball just this is probably the biggest the women's tournament has ever been there's more superstars Mm -hmm. so to speak more marketable athletes and i think it uh, i think it was colin cow heard the other day he was talking on his show about how name who's the star in men's basketball right now yeah you can't name them there's three in women's basketball right now so you know, there's, I mean, and there's probably even more than that. So you, at least you can name one or two players from women's basketball right now. So I think that that's probably where you would spend the money. There's more TV opportunities. If you're trying to increase the reach of your own institution, just based on the TV and the marketing, I think it's women's basketball. But, you know, I, I think you could spend it if you if you decided to take all the money and spend it someplace. I think you can have success. I do too. I mean, I think if you chunked a bunch of money towards volleyball, you could end up being a national power. I I don't know. Maybe you, Nebraska. They're paying big money. They that might be. It's kind of a cool volleyball culture they have. Take the take the nil money and start a softball team. Do that. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. I don't think that women's basketball necessarily needs much help right now. Like they just sold out very much Coliseum hosting the NCAA tournament, right? You want to give that to another sport to start them up or give it to volleyball to where you can get it to a point to where you, you have the more selling out. I know it's a small arena, but get that place rocking and rolling. Get more than just one women's sports, you know, catching the attention of a lot of fans. Okay. I mean, if you really want to val- if you want to maximize the value of NIL, I think the best way to do it is go find the Livy Duns of the world. Go find the the women on social media that have hundreds of thousands of followers 
that have their own personal brands that are entertaining and connect with an audience. And that's how, and you get national deals that you don't have to worry about your own local donor base. Go find the people that are naturally using their NIL to make a ton of money that just so happen to play for K state. That's, that's the type of athlete right. you need to recruit for these types of sports. Well, and then the elite athletes, like you can have problems with Kate and Clark and how she handles herself, but she's getting legitimate NIL money, right? She's state farm. Who else? She's got another one. I mean, she's getting national money now for, because of her name, image, and likeness, like it was intended. Like if she, the, the amount of money that she makes, she, it probably frees up a lot of money for the Iowa collective That's to give true. to other players that, and, and you know the value of iowa increases going to iowa saying hey we can pay you more also look at your teammate she's making a ton of nil legitimately so i think that you know you may not need to to recruit the best athlete as long as they are a marketable person so um i don't know if folks are aware of this but because of student visas uh Students from overseas, from outside the United States, are not eligible for NIL. They can't, they can't, they don't have a work visa. They're not supposed to have a job. This is a layer that we aren't thinking about. Uh, and you know what? There's ways around it. Yeah. I've seen some workarounds there. Oh my gosh. I, Just I, set I, up a company in the home country and funnel the NIL there. Or, or they can't work in the U.S. So if you're Kansas, you schedule a game in Mexico. Thank you, Big 12. And Johnny Furphy makes a appearance down there for X amount of dollars that basically pays his NIL for the entire year. He goes to a booster meeting in Mexico. Woo! And here's whatever hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know if it would work. It'd be easier. It, the comparison would be easier if you said Australia. Uh, nope. It's not, <laughs> I, I know this one because that's what's going to happen. What, is that what? Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, yeah, I mean, because they're not working in the United States. They'd be working in Mexico, which has nothing guess, to do with their yeah. student visa. Oh, to that point, yes. Yeah. But I don't know what the tape would be between Mexico and Australia. I do agree. If you yeah. really want someone overseas, you get an Australian company to sponsor him and actually have NIL back at home. Right. Yeah. Like David Gasson. Go right. find a Dutch company. Go find and... a, a big tulip grower. Yeah. Or uh, a, a windmill manufacturer, or uh, clogs. Okay, clogs. I've run out of things that might. Goodness, be the yeah. Ones. A Heineken deal. That? And now, actually, talking. actually, I don't think you're allowed to. Uh, oh, that's right. Do Ooh. alcohol? Ooh, Heineken zero point zero. Oh, I was gonna there say. You go. There you go. The Glen Kinley drink. Yep. Uh, go ahead. You ready? That's it. That's it. That's it for the first half. That's it for the first half. I'm telling you folks, I'm not all here. Um, I'm just not, I'm not fully participating, but look at them. Look how sweet they are. Look how cute they are laying there. And, and uh, the dogs are cute there. Cute too. Okay. Remove. Uh, let's just go to break. Let's I'm, I'm, I'm like a drunk guy running a podcast, but I'm not doing either. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Please visit The Fridge Wholesale Liquor, located at the corner of Claflin and Westport Road in Manhattan, Kansas. Welcome back to the show. Let's return to the Cats and Dogs studio. Fitz, Zach, and Gills, it's your Power Cat Podcast, weekly edition. Taking your questions from Wild Bass Station, sent in by our subscribers at Go Power Cat. Of course, you can... Watch on YouTube, listen on whatever your preferred podcast platform might be. You played the music. This, you played. Also, it just fades out. It, it did. If, if you I, played it this time. You hit, I, it, you hit the button. I've got like two things to control down there, and it just fades out on its own. But I forget to check it. And Sometimes it you looping. forget to. <laughs> well, you didn't play it the first half. No, I did. I did. Did you? I did. I, when we had to restart, I got it in there. Oh, well, I didn't remember that one. Uh, well, the listeners don't remember the restart at all, all because right. you didn't see it. Yeah. I screwed things up, which I do. It's like a, a level of screw up. Uh, this one exceeded my, my usually normal levels of screw up. 
more questions. Here we go. Go to the fridge. Damn it. Go to the fridge. That's the old ad. From Ohio Power Cat, first for Gills, are there any lessons from last year's experience with the transfer portal that will change how Jerome Tang approaches this year's portal? I've said yeah. this a lot. It was it for Gills or Fitz? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I go. said Gills. Uh, Gills. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want you Fitz, to answer. You're supposed to be lazy on this show, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I know I've said this a lot, but look, go ahead. Are you going to make fun of me or no? No, just talk. Okay, fine. Um, I know I've said this a lot, that this is the time to be assertive, be aggressive in the portal because of what happened last year. K-State certainly missed out on some players, but uh, you know I think they – they, they maybe tried to be patient but waited too long with some guys. And so uh, just go out and use this time. I know that you know, this afternoon there were some guys that I think Maryland, Xavier, like Iowa State already got one. There's already players that are going to other schools. It's not like you're going to have to wait till April till players start making the, these decisions, right? You know, you've got to, you know, these players, some of them just want to get a spot, right? You know, if right. you're maybe a little unsure about, you know, how many there's thousands of players in the portal, you want to make sure that you got a spot. Maybe it's not the number one spot that would be best for you, but you got a spot. Some players maybe just want that. So you've got to get on this early. I know that, you know, we said this last week. We said this on the insiders as well. I think Fitz, like you go on Twitter or X, there's hundreds of players that I've heard from K-State. That you know, maybe be a, a little bit of an exaggeration, but there are so many players. Some of those is maybe just a quick little text or phone call. There's other ones that are obviously a lot more deeper, but be aggressive, be assertive. I said that all along and, you, you know, Time is ticking every day that goes by. You're continuing to see more and more people hearing from K-State. Uh, you know, I think soon here in the coming days, it's got to be this guy's narrowing down his list and Kansas State is one of those schools. That's what you want to see. Uh, I think one of the things that's changed is we all know Jerome Tang wasn't going to get in a bidding war last year. Uh, he kind of, they assessed what a player was worth to them and made that offer. And I think they've reevaluated that, not to get in a bidding war, but <clears throat> be willing to admit maybe we evaluated you wrong in terms of your market value, and here's here's an up to offer, you know. And yeah, it is kind of getting in a bidding war, but you can make yourself feel better, like, well, we just kind of screwed up your value. Well, we apologize here, here, here's and and get the player, you know, standing on your uh, morals that you don't want to have be in bidding wars or whatever is great until you go to the NIT or you don't make the tournament at all. Uh, you know, then, then you're like, well, okay, we're going to have to do some things different. And I do agree with you, Gills. I think they just, they kept waiting for the Keontae Johnson to pop up and yeah. they didn't ever pop up. I mean, they, they made the mistake of thinking that was going to be a normal thing in the portal and it wasn't. And they, they just can't push it all the way back. But again, at least basketball, you can go overseas and go find some guys. And I'd hope they would do that. They'll go yep. to places where you might find a guy that you can develop into something and and uh, free up NIL money for the rest of your roster. I don't believe that was when Naquan Tallman was dismissed. I think it was last summer where they talked about going overseas. Though They've talked about it at some point. So that yeah. certainly could be something on the table for these guys. I don't know where Zach just went. But that, one that more thing right. that – we can, the, I can hear him. I can't see him though. <laughs> his the app the, just quit. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're trying to silence the media. Big tech. Are we still recording? I can oh, hear yeah. you just fine. Oh, now. you're we're okay. recording. All, All right. You're all still right. you're still part of the talking. Oh, okay. I'm just my camera's gone. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Whatever. We'll get you back Unique. up here. Okay. Anyways, I was just gonna add uh, with the NFL draft coming up, I've been listening to some NFL podcasts and stuff about how you you don't typically want to just draft by position, right? We need a center. Doesn't matter if this center is good or not. Let's just take one and fill that position. That's not the mindset that you want to get into, right? If there's a good player on the board, you can fit it. You can you know mess with the position later. Just get some good guys on your team. And I think K State maybe tried to do that last off season with trying to just fill in specific roles. Okay, now there is some truth to this. Okay, Joe Tillery. Did a nice little video talking about uh, Jones, CJ Jones, not to get confused with RJ Jones, who's the guys in the portal that K State's going after. There's, there's some interest there. And so a five out offense. You want to get guys that are going to be good in your scheme. That, you know, I'm not saying that you just need to accept everybody on your team that that's athletic and can score. But at the same time, okay, you know, I, I think that this staff, 
But to be honest, guys, I think they wanted Tyler Perry to be Marquise Noel. Have him be the one, be the scorer, be the facilitator, do everything. I hear, I hear a loud, loud echo. echo. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay. You guys hear that? Yeah, that was. Yeah. Okay. I don't hear the, it anymore. The, the, the <laughs> second computer that Zach runs off of is absolutely freaked out. But go- <laughs> see, I hear that. I see that. Yeah. But if that makes if that makes sense, you got to just bring in dudes and then you can you can figure out your schemes your systems your schematics you can figure that later on i would just be focused on bringing in dudes and guys that can compete and obviously there's a mold there's a type of player that you want to bring in but again i could be wrong here uh but in my mind in my opinion i think last year they were trying to specifically to find specific types of players to you know fit certain roles i think this go around just bring in guys that if you see the upside if you know even if it's a guy like Jerrell colbert who they brought in two off seasons ago, right? He redshirted. He didn't do much at, at LSU, right? And that was more of a long-term, you know, project. Same thing can probably be said for, um, well, I guess that was probably the only way. Well, anyways, so if that, if that makes sense though, try to get guys that can come in and then you can deal with them later instead of just trying to get guys to, to fill uh, certain roles. I agree. I, uh, what we've learned though is, even if you get them, another thing the NCAA or someone needs to address, there's nothing that commits them. I mean, Will McNair went on a trip with Providence and he ended up at K-State. I'm sorry, that's insane. That's That just doesn't make sense to me. But that's that's the world in which we live. The court said you can transfer as much as you want. Now guys are transferring and they stay a couple weeks and don't like it and they transfer. Or, you know, they... Or they go from Alabama to Iowa, get $100,000 in a signing bonus, and head right back to Alabama to get your NIL from them. It's just insanity. Kind of a brilliant move. Not if you ever want to go home. Well, in that specific instance, yes, but I did laugh. Uh, Next question is from Dinland0809. Was the Big 12 the best basketball conference this year? I think... I, I don't think we have the proper measurement yet. I think from top to bottom, yeah, it was incredibly competitive. But I, I'm not sure the Big 12s performed up to standards. However, however, if Houston and Iowa State end up in the Final Four and Arizona's in the Final Four, I think you still have that to sell. This is the best conference. I don't think that will happen. That would be the absolute golden scenario for Brett Yormark to have three of the four final four teams be from his conference next year. It would prove the point that the the basketball contract probably does have a lot of value. Um, but, you know, the tournament, it you, there's going to be upsets and things happen. And plus, Iowa State would probably have to go through UConn, the defending champion, and good luck with that. It's just a miserable seating for Iowa State in that term. But... Yeah, I, I don't. I don't, it just kind of depends on how you measure. Again, is the Big Ten really that much better? I would say no in in like football because there's so many bad teams. It just depends on how you're measuring, and it's really the eye of the beholder. And I think this really got started from announcers that were coming out covering Big Twelve games, and no matter who they put on the court, the games were competitive and fun. And I think that started the whole, yeah, it's the best conference out there. And really, we've now found out that uh, there were some teams that just weren't as good as what we thought. Or they just I mean, collapsed. I don't want to put too much stock into this postseason, though. And that's just a 40-minute sample size from Texas Tech and BYU. And then Kansas's 20-minute sample size against Gonzaga in the second half. It's just tough to put all that all your eggs in that one basket to evaluate a whole conference and same thing goes for Kansas State right if Kansas State was playing in the NCAA tournament you get a different product on the court than what you saw uh in Iowa City against Iowa because that would that the stakes of that tournament in the NIT versus the NCAA tournament are just completely different and so uh, you know I, I, again if Kansas has Kevin McCall and, and Hunter Dickens is 100% healthy are they still in the tournament right now and into the second weekend who knows and obviously playing in you know the injuries are a part of the game and Fitz, I talked about this with you and Big B on Monday and the insiders, the officiating, it's different. Okay, you get used to that for your 18-game you know, season in the Big 12, and then things switch up, and you got to adjust on the fly to that physicality that other official, you know, officials are calling it, right? As much as we want to bash Doug Sermon or Kip Kissinger, whoever those officials are, 
most by and large, they're mostly consistent with the way that you can guard a player and, and the contact you can maybe get away with. And the big dance, it's just it's different officials. And so maybe that's why some teams struggled not blaming everything on officials and not saying that the officials were good or bad, but it, you know, it can be different when you go out of that conference play into the big dance. And so there's a lot of variables there, and you don't want to put so much into just that little few, those few games of the NCAA tournament, but you can make that argument for the SEC too. Like they had one, they had one team win a single game, right? Am I wrong on that? I think it was one or two teams, but you know, I think yeah. the Big 12 and the SEC having the same amount of schools was absurd. And even though the Big 12 has struggled, I'd still very strongly believe that that was the case, if that doesn't sit right with me. I mean, yeah, you, the SEC is getting hammered. Only one team advanced out of the first yeah, round. Okay. But, okay. you know, I mean, Oakland's not better than Kentucky overall. They just yeah. won that day. And there was another upset that they suffered. Auburn, I think, lost. Yeah. They, they, they just won that day. It's not, it doesn't sum up your entire season. Now, it might sum up your program if you continue to repeat that. Uh, that you you're not built for the postseason, Kentucky. but yeah, I mean, yeah, Kentucky's kind of there. I'm <laughs> really like really two, surprised they kept him two and eight. Yeah. So well, money talks. Well, yeah, he's got to change how he's doing it. He just thought he could go in there and rent players and and win national championships, and that's not how it's working. Yeah, I think, like Gills kind of said, I think the NCAA tournament's a coin flip. I don't think you can take too much stock into it. It's meant to be entertaining, you know. It, it's a 40 minute sample size over the course of an entire season. You know, it frustrating to see Texas tech and BYU lose in the first round. But, you know, like you said, Fitz, Iowa state Houston, still alive, Arizona still alive, maybe a little bit cheap to count them as a, a big 12 team at the moment. But if, you know, two of those three make the final four, the conference is going to be in great shape next mm -hmm. great, great shape next year. You're going to have, the talking point of having two teams in the final four. I mean, it's only going to get harder. It's only going to get better. I think that, you know, you can't, and I say this about the sec too, because the sec was probably the second best conference this year and they've struggled more than the big 12. So, you know, it's anything can happen in March. Um, I wouldn't take what's happened to this, you know, over the opening weekend and apply that to a whole season and say, well, actually, I disagree with that. Well, the question's from Denland0809, right? Denland0809, yes. is not, he's not asking this question if the Big 12 still has four teams remaining, five teams remaining in the Big Dance, right. right? Yeah. So it's that recency bias, and I get it. You know, it's I guess it's a debate now, but it's called March Madness for a reason. Those teams can go on upsets and, and, and get hot, and that's what makes the tournament so fun. But when you do have those teams, those Power 5 team lose, we have these conversations. I mean, give credit to KU for winning in the first round, I think. Because, that I mean, I think that, yes, they're injured. They struggled. Um, but they did get it done. And I think the narrative would at least be a little bit more different than what we're talking about had they lost in the first round. I agree. That brand, if they lose in the first round, was yeah. bad for the I mean, and, and I think that KU, you know, the success of KU is kind of – how the Big 12 is viewed, I think. And I think that's going to change as KU goes down and other teams are up. But for the last two decades, KU has dominated as the Big 12 team. They were the Big 12. If they were making the Final Four, right. they made your conference look good. And that's kind of what people know as far as Big 12 basketball. If KU isn't the you know the leader, it's it's hard to say, well, oh, the Big 12's you know still good, at least from the national landscape. I, agree. I mean, you know, it's kind of like the, S I mean, look at the SEC. If Kentucky's not winning, but there's other teams that are doing well and making, you know, deep runs in the tournament, doesn't make them a bad conference. It just means that the times have changed a little bit. So, you know, I think it did help that KU at least advanced to the second day. Thanks, KU. Thank you, KU. Next question is from came to elevate now that football, volleyball, men's basketball, and women's basketball are done. What has been the best sports moment for K State this season? Hmm. Hmm. I like this question. I think eating a mascot. Yes. It, <laughs> As a fat guy, eating a mascot <laughs> is remarkable. And they toasted the little sucker. They toasted that mascot and then it spit him out. 
And Avery Johnson and Chris Kleiman just used their hands like real men and just shoved that mascot in their face and ate it. Is that maybe did, the best? Did you see the picture of my shoe? Mm. Yeah, that's where the I was going to go. The Big 12 tournament. Uh, yeah, we're in the hotel was, room. I was, we were in the hotel room, and it was the first time I had worn those shoes since the Pop-Tarts Bowl. And I look at the bottoms, and I'm like, I'm kind of sticky. I'm like, why? I'm like, why? is there like gum and it's like massive amounts of gum. And then I like looked at it and I was like, I think that's strawberry. <laughs> he's just <laughs> poor strawberry. He's, his guts are just on my shoes and I still have not cleaned them. Like they wouldn't come off. And you said, so. Gilbert, why is your shoe? Why is my shoe in your mouth? That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to blame you for the room being sticky, but that's a whole different topic. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think winning the bowl game was kind of cool because it was the first glimpse of Avery um, and, you know, what could happen. Eh, first real gl glimpse of Avery happened down in Lubbock, though. That's true. That might be it. Yeah. That was, as far as football games go, the game in Lubbock was a more fun football game. Yes. Yes, because the, the kid just played. and But Pop-Tarts and rocket launches and Disney World, mm -hmm. good argument there. Okay. But Lubbock was more fun. Um, you could throw in volleyball beating Texas. That yeah, that stretch where they beat Texas, BYU, and BYU. All right, and they played them long run at home of just like sweeps. To, they yeah, they, they didn't drop a single game for a while. I think crazy what they did. Um, you could go with what else? The no hitter for baseball no hitter? so far. That's, That's pretty hard good. To do. Um. Men's basketball, the overtime streak is still alive. Uh, women's basketball, they had fun. Beat Iowa. Yeah. I mean, that's They won at Iowa earlier. Beating today. Iowa, yeah. But I, I, I'm going to go with the bowl game. I, I, I just think it set us up um, for next year. Set up uh, everything going on at K-State for optimism for the next year. And I like it when K-State fans are optimistic. Well, I appreciate it. Good news for the that leads us into the next question. The I'm, final I'm question. A you're a master at this. Mm -hmm. uh, final question of the podcast from Hemon Rockabelly Dancer. Who <laughs> was the most successful 2024? Who will have the most successful 2024 2025 season? Football, men's basketball, women's basketball, mm -hmm. or baseball? Or someone else, if you well, I, feel like it. I mean, I think football is going to play for a conference title. I really believe that. So I'm going to say football right off the bat. That could be a tone setter. That's what it's called in the big leagues there, Gilbert. A tone setter. Is Ioka Lee going to be back? Yeah. That's a big if. Yeah. <sighs> Even if she is, I'm still picking football. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, what other pieces are back for women's basketball, I guess? Gabby Gregory's gone. I don't know how replaceable she is. It's not my expertise for sports, but seems like a key piece that you got to replace. I don't know about men's men's basketball. It could be anything. Yeah, we just if, don't know. We don't have enough information on yeah. their roster. I, th I feel like if men's basketball makes the tournament, <laughs> they got a shot at something, you know? Uh, volleyball is going to be yeah. good. Carter's back. Thank you, NIL. Say football. I think you're I right. Think I think football. If you make, if they make the Big Twelve Championship game, it's hard to look at another sport and say that they had a more successful season if they don't reach a similar point or reach the Sweet Sixteen in basketball. And make a super regional in baseball. I think those are the mm -hmm. the benchmarks for me, because I think that football can do that, make the Big Twelve Championship game, and then those other three benchmarks. Yeah, I mean, essentially, be the final sixteen teams. And if you make the Big Twelve Championship game, you're a top twelve team, most likely in the country. So, I'll go with football. He's going with football. Gilbert, you going with football? Yeah, talk to me into it. I think it's, you know, if you were to get the odds for all these games, football would be would have the shortest odds to have the best season. So, I mean, there's a lot of question marks with men's basketball. I think they have the potential if they hit on some guys in the portal and things kind of fall their way. 
I would you could talk me into basketball, men's basketball, but you know, football is just kind of there for him, isn't it? And the Big 12 maybe isn't as strong as it might be or have been in the past you know number of years. And so for football, I think it's right there for him. I would agree. Is that we're done, right? That's the last question. Gilbert, this podcast is done. I've I've last two weeks I've cut you off at the end of the podcast. I'm not gonna do that this time. Well, plus, I don't think you're falling for it. He's baiting you. I know. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to bait him into it, but he won't do it. He's like a clever cat. I don't know. I, that's it. We're done. We'll talk to you next week. This has been a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Please support this show by subscribing to this YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite podcast platform.